Mark is clearly extremely interesting and is great. I may be just good and trying to get better. And I think that's why I call this the brand building journey. It's a journey we are all on every single day and it never ends. Just like your drive for deep purpose and causes never ends. But what I put under here is rooting in purpose to build sustainable brands. And that's something I've had the fortune of discovering over my career and it's something that was a passion that was always there is there's always a purpose behind the brand. You can find what difference might it make to someone's lives from time at Procter to VF to Gallo and now at Deutsch Family Wine Spirits. Because if you root on purpose, I'll guarantee you it'll lead to the big idea and that's what we're talking about. Now there's ideas, but you need a big idea. And when you get a big idea, if it's not sustainable, what is it? Anyone. A fad, a blip that might get you promoted, but sustainable is what we're here to do. And I believe we're stewards of our brands. We don't own anything, we're just stewards of moving forward. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a three-step process. I'm actually gonna return us to stuff you already know in the brand building journey. And then I'm gonna talk about purpose-driven DNA. And then I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples in the alcohol industry and actually in the energy uh, drinks in, uh, area. And yes, there can be purpose in there, tied to the consumer. So, first thing I'm gonna do is a brand building journey. Now at a time at VF, when I joined there, is there they'd been working, been working with uh, professors of prominent universities, et cetera, trying to really codify the whole brand building um, journey. Now you guys all know this. You guys know all the stuff I'm about to say. But I'd like a show of hands, how many, do you, how many of you do really believe you are applying every single thing you know about the brand building journey when you build a brand every single day? Show of hands, how many people really think they're doing it? So no one? How many people think other people are doing it? Exactly, I don't know I'm doing it enough. So through adult learning and learning this, created a simple thing, www.how. And these symbols matter a lot because that's also memorability. So the first one is where, and this all feeds into purpose. So you want a great purpose, you better make sure it's well-rooted and understood so that you can articulate it to other people and they can follow you and build on it. So where is the landscape? It's what's going on with your consumer, consumer trends, your customer, your category, critical issues going on in the world, in your country. You need to understand that whole framework to be able to inform the next thing, which is your target. Who are you really going after? And you have the whole market, and then you have a series of rings into it, which lead to what I call the bullseye target. And I know, again, I'm not to, you guys, there's a million methods of DNAs and brand building journeys and everything, particularly a lot of agencies here. I know they're all proprietary and they're very special, just like mine is too. Uh, but this kind of, synthesized a lot of them and trying to get the best out of it. And under each one of these is a drop down menu of all the tools you can use. But the who was getting that bullseye target, who becomes kind of the center of your purpose, who becomes the center of your innovation, your drive, and what you must always lead with and make sure you're satisfying. Make sure you're asking those tough questions. Importantly, that informs the what. And the what is what we're really doing here. It's your promise and your DNA. It's what you ultimately stand for, and that I'll dive into a bit deeper. And that, of course, informs your annual plan if you have everything. But one of the greatest gaps, you know, see that little dot in there? What do we often do is we say all these wonderful words, and then does the plan reflect all the things we said we need to do? Often not, so the obvious, the brand playbook. How many people have really, really robust brand playbooks for their brands right now? So we have a few hands, no one else, come on, I need some participation. How many people have robust playbooks? Okay, a few more, there we go. And that's the problem is, does it talk about your brand, it's DNA, does it talk about the voice, the tone, et cetera? Is it rooted in purpose? And once you've typed all that in, once you've done all that, if you type in www.how, what do you have to do? You gotta press the return button and it starts again. And I think this is critical for us as marketers, agencies, et cetera. If we're going to build on purpose, you need to be in a constant cycle, and that cycle is getting faster, always up to speed on what's going on, what's going on in the market, and how does this inform this, to inform this, to make it better, to make your annual plan better, change the playbook so you can actually deliver. 
Okay, so there's the brand building journey. You know, it's simple I had method, but I want to go into one deeper now. This is what I want to focus on because this leads it into the topic of purpose and getting a big ideas. So this is a brand DNA model. Again, I know there's many of them. This one codified off a lot of things to get it really robust. So it starts, the foundation is our purpose, then it moves up to our values, and you see this line here, I call that the sand line. That's where the stuff below that line is really what's kind of internal, the stuff above the line is what the consumer will see and feel. Well, I'll suggest that that line is coming down to here right now, particularly with the millennials. There is no sand line anymore. What you see hidden behind here, because this actually builds, is points of parity. That's the next thing of what do you have to do to even be competitive in the category, just to be able to exist. And then we go up to things you all know, emotional points of difference and functional points of difference. Very important to split those two so you understand the difference between the core utility of your product and the emotional utility of your product and how you're going to reach out, because often your purpose is going to live very much on the emotional side. That ladders up into archetype and personality. Um, you talked a little bit about that, but the young in archetypes, this is your tone of voice, what you represent, and it's something that's been critical in our team's work with John in really understanding what is the voice, how do we reach out to that type of archetype? And a brand doesn't just have one. Ultimately, if you've got this right, these things are all laddering up to a promise. And that's, we promise we will do X. That is the tangible delivery of your purpose to the consumer in a way that will make sure over time the purpose actually uh, emerges and becomes real. And that's what's exciting, and I'm gonna take you a way of doing uh, that. Now, when we got into purpose, this was a simple definition. It's why our companies exist. What motivates us to deliver our promise to our target consumer in addition to delivering shareholder value. And the value thing, you cannot deny that, because you deliver real value, then it's gonna stay around, and you're gonna get to fulfill your purpose. If you're not delivering value, you're not gonna fulfill your purpose. But there's one word that bothers me now, and I decided not to change it, but I've changed and everything else is target consumer. And I thought about this, and last night I was sitting outside, and I was overhearing some CEOs out there talking, and they're talking about using words like our end user our end customer, our end consumer. And I thought, wow, how dehumanizing. Do we, should we really call them consumers? How about humans? And that's the first unlock I had when starting to think about it in context of purpose. Because we're humans. And by the way, we don't only buy Tide and live our lives around Tide, believe it or not, or the product that you make. We don't only live in that little world. You have to put it in context. And I think what purpose does is it helps put your brand in better context. And that's what it's about. So I'd change it to who is our human that we're going after, and that leads you to the attitudes and behaviors. Again, stuff you all know, but how often are we actually activating and doing stuff with this? So when this went, I'm gonna take you through an example. One of our brands, we have the brand Yellowtail, inexpensive wine from Australia. That category has all kind of been declining, it's been in trouble. We also have brands like Josh, which is one on fire and a Redemption Rye, which is going to tell you. So other brands, and we're making every single one of them purpose-driven, which will, I hopefully, surprise you in what's possible there. So we went to Australia, uh, where the Yellowtail uh, owners are based, and worked with a guy called James Pike. I call him an Aussie purpose-driven brand expert, and his company's called Purpose Made. Now, I have my own slides on purpose, but I like this so much, I asked, can I use these because of what he did? He talked about the evolution to purpose-driven brands. And again, this is important because this is not over just history. I think this is still happening with many of our brands. And you'll recognize what stage your brand's in. The first stage was a selling culture. It was about distribution and you know, unique selling point. And it's saying or telling. That's what we're doing. Does that sound familiar? Anyone sales-driven in sales-driven companies still hears that. Well, then it evolved to more a marketing culture, and that became about awareness and you know, emotional benefits, you know, special benefits of the product, et cetera, and that was saying with feeling. I kind of skipped over just the pure functional one, but we've really tried hard. We have to say it with more feeling. Well, this is where it's going. It's going to a contribution culture, and this is where purpose plays its role. 
purpose, shared value, and utility. Utility being really interesting to find that, and that is doing with feeling. It's not selling, it's not just trying to make something attract someone, it's doing with feeling. And I really like when I look at this evolution of purpose-driven brands, because it explains it. Now, to make this work, you really have to have a clear purpose and vision that inspires. I'll admit, when I first started working with James, you know, vision, mission, all these things, it's starting to get confusing. This is the first time vision made more sense to me, though. So the def definition of purpose, not unlike what I'd said in mine, the belief that we put at the forefront of everything, our purpose for existence. And one thing I should have said is, the idea of purpose is, if you get a great purpose, imagine you're in, okay, I'm in the wine industry, and suddenly, wine, spirits is illegal. Purpose will allow you to continue your business, just using a different product, using a different means. That's what a good purpose is. If the purpose includes your product name or category, you've probably missed the boat. You haven't established a real purpose. Vision, though, is fascinating. We went through this exercise. The way the world would be if we had our way and how it creates value for stakeholders. It really makes you vision to that crazy place. I mean, it's audacious. It's way out there. Hard to get to, but it really does make you reframe yourself so you don't make your purpose, uh, I want to build distribution in Safeway. Okay, that's not a purpose. You have to think much bigger. So, from there, I'm gonna give you just this top line. We just did this with this brand Yellowtail. Okay, it's a you know, low price brand. Our project purpose was to rediscover Yellowtail's reason for being that will make us culturally iconic and valuable today and tomorrow. We wanted to rearticulate the brand positioning in light of the deeper purpose and to enable each market to translate it in action easily. Now I'm gonna show you the method that I learned from James, which is talking about going for on missions. So again, my job is to be a bit more boring and show how we actually translate the purpose into action, so I hope this is working. Um, <laughs> So why? We exist to bring people together so we all shine brighter. That's actually what our purpose is. Sounds simple, and that makes sense. Bringing people, we have it articulated slightly different here, it's uh, bring people together around the table. Sounds obvious, but is anyone talking about that really in different ways? And the vision is a more inclusive world that radiates happiness and enjoyment that's contagious. Yeah, that fits the wine category. It's fun, it's people getting together, but. What we're realizing these times when everyone's down and battling and looking for differences, we want to get it up here that we can radiate happiness and enjoyment. We can get that going out in the world, but it's going to take several steps to get there. And that's, I'm going to take you through two examples of that. I'm going to share with you the one we're on right now with the Yellowtail because this is in process, leading to a campaign. The first one was to reset Australian quality and deliciousness is what we call it. At this level, people like talking about the delicious wines. And we had to reset it because no one was talking taste anymore. And our wines actually taste superior, just the way they're made and what they put into them. The second mission became bring happiness to everyone's table, which I said, you can see how this starts linking back to the two things. And this is the mission. We're bridging these missions right now because we're trying to catch up. And the third one, which is loose at this point, is sharing the Aussie spirit that lights up the world and everything we do. So we're bringing a bit more Australia back in and bringing that in. I wouldn't look at that one right now. That kind of the third one to put that down is a bit premature. But what we did is realize we've got to hit taste. We're going to get this message of happiness. And we worked with an agency called BAM out of New York. And we came up with this. We're actually going to have a Super Bowl commercial. We have actually had one the past years, but it's taste like happy. We know it's happy's in the brackets. And Tastes Like Happy is a campaign that we're actually doing, showing what Tastes Like Happy means to consumers. It doesn't mention wine a lot. It's what impact does it have emotionally on your life and what tastes like happy to you. So we're starting a movement of people talking about their happiness. And how we're taking it, and this is where John comes in. So we have this commercial. We're going to be doing all sorts of things around it. But we're creating a UGC contest with Social Ties to identify the core people who will be interested in this, where we have segments in this ad of these reflections of happy. And two consumers, or groups of consumers, are going to, will, uh, the people will submit their ads and that ad will end up in the Super Bowl. So they're actually going to have user generated contacts show up with their spot in the Super Bowl and then they can win a trip to go to the Super Bowl, et cetera. And imagine what this does. This talks about getting into the culture 
and suddenly it's going viral because these people are going to be extending the message of happiness and starting to think, yeah, let me talk about happiness. This is kind of cool, and the reaction in groups we ever had is ridiculous. We think this could really make this thing last longer. Does that make sense? So that's just a little bit of a whole campaign we're doing. I'm gonna show you how it works on an obvious brand just to really bring it home. Red Bull, purpose, to push the boundaries of what's humanly possible. Here's that thing, mission one was to demonstrate that energy drinks can deliver experiences that no other form of food or drink can. The utility, product utility, stimulation of caffeine and taurine, simple. They had to establish that first, that was their first mission. Their second mission then said, help adults liberate and embrace their creative and youthful spirit. The brand utility, seed money to give people's ideas wings. So they started seeding into what are those things you wanna do. And that led to the third mission, which they're already on, empower leading athletes, athletes in thriving extreme sports to make the impossible reality. Brand utility, lead the change and give voice to ground baking projects. So I don't even put their final vision on there because there isn't one. It's just out there. And that's what's fascinating about Red Bull. That's the idea of taking the time, dissecting what's reasonable, and building missions along the way to fulfill the purpose. But making sure you're not losing your job, uh, you still, we are gonna sell cases, okay? So I'll do um, this actually a quick thing that uh, John and I talked about is really the evolution of marketing. How many people hear about impressions? I have 10 million impressions. I, I just saw a great one. We got four billion impressions in America. Really? Okay, well, it must, everyone must be sleeping with you then, uh, because something's not right. <laughs> Impressions to attention to connection, and this is where we have to end up. It's that road to connection, and this is where social interaction, and why I'm working so hard with Social Ties, and he's a leading social influencer group, and does the media, et cetera, and posts, and all that stuff, but it's the influencers who are critical. What we did, I told you about archetypes, so every man is actually the archetype for Josh, our brand Josh. But they go through a process of understanding the other parts of this archetype that are relevant to it. And then we create a percentage of number of posts that will go out for each of these type sub-archetypes. And that helps us track what's resonating most with the consumers and draws in a different story. As um, uh, we heard at the beginning, it's about storytelling. So this allows us to tell better stories. I'm gonna make this very clear, so I'm gonna hit through last two things, I got a minute. Redemption whiskey, redemption is our new whiskey. Redemption, isn't that a great brand name to have? We're just launching it, and it's rooted in rye, and the rye revival, it was the new thing. Well, working with John, we found out that Redemption Whiskey customer is 10 times more likely to enjoy live music than the average Instagram user. This is about getting to the data and make sure you can get to the people to start a movement, just like you did in New York. Get to the core people, the yogis. That was your platform, that's your big idea, was follow the yogis. and. In this case with uh, redemption, what we learned is we dissected what does redemption really mean? There's a religious connotation, there's everything. What redemption means to people is there's a struggle, there's a tough thing they go through, then they go through the fire as we call it. They get through this fire and then they're new. They, they have this new aura, this new thing. Now in sports, that happens every single week. Uh, we track the number of times we hear redemption mentioned in a week. What was it last week or something like that? Like in Once. posts and everything. So it's up in like 10,000 times you hear redemption mentioned. So we want to tap into that. So what John did is we come up with the idea. Oh, the slide isn't in there. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Okay. So rather than this, can you go back a bit so I can at least stand redemption, not go to Fleur? Thank you. So there's a really beautiful slide of a whole bunch of pictures of um, what we did is the redemption music sessions. And this is important. Um, we found three groups of magicians and actually one athlete, uh, the athlete uh, Grant Corgan. Corgan, who actually uh, broke his back. He was an extreme athlete, but then he managed to recover and he went out to the, he actually skied out to the South Pole. Amazing guy, he was there as well. We did interviews with them on their stories of redemption and how they defined redemption. And then uh, we also did a little music session with them. Now why does this matter? Because the purpose of redemption is we're seeing it. It really is to inspire people to move through their fire and keep moving forward, always. And our tagline is the spirit perseveres. 
And these stories, they're blowing his way. Like these guys started crying. This is a rock guy crying as he realizes how he got to where he got to. So we're tapping into the fabric of society. We're tapping into culture. And so the consumers are going to bring our purpose alive. And that's the idea. We're handing it over so they can bring it alive. And it brings alive a purpose of sharing these stories that matter to you that opens up the rest of the world to share and say, hey, we're all going through this stuff. I shouldn't feel so down. I know I can get through it. And that's about empowerment. And it fights against depression, too. So that's where that one's going. The last one we'll end on is actually a brand called Fleur, Fleur de Paris Rosé. Rosé is everywhere. And it's very feminine. And it's very nice. And everyone's drinking it. And one of our main competitors, it's kind of frivolous or a little bit almost arrogant in some ways. Well, Fleur de Paris, we sat there with a group of women. And the bottle has these wildflowers on it, these designs. And one woman goes, you know, it's kind of like us. You know, here we are. We're all individuals. But wildflowers grow in a field. And this is where we got the inspiration was going to Provence. They grow in a field. They rise up. They're all different. But they work together. And the women started talking about, you know, we need to do something else than just, we're not going to put down things. And so this is not the Me Too movement. This is the inspiring women and supporting women in connective empowerment. And that led to the tagline of Flourish Together. And it sounds funny. For a wine, really? Yeah. John unlocked the consumer, found out who it was. What are those moments? And men are not excluded from this, by the way. Um, of what are those moments that women get together and talk about who they are, how to move together, and how to strengthen each other, et cetera. And we're actually going to be ending up at certain conferences, et cetera, being the wine supplier, et cetera, and just getting that conversation going on a positive note. So a few quick examples. I hope that shows you some activation from way out here to how you can activate it, particularly through social, to bring a purpose alive. So that's the end of my time, so we can do questions. I hope that gives you a snapshot of purpose and activating it. But follow that method and don't forget the brand fundamentals. If you don't have your DNA right, you're never going to figure out how to get your purpose for it. So thank you. And please be purpose driven. It makes a difference. All right? So.